Good afternoon and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first ever episode of the Grizz News Show. I am one of your co-hosts, Nestor Melendez, Director of Student Leadership and Campus Life. And with me is my co-host, co-anchor, uh, and partner in crime, the Vice President of Student Engagement, Charles Pryor. Uh, VP Pryor, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing well, Nestor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to Nestor um, and welcome everyone to uh, the first Grizz News Show. Um, as you know, for just over a year, we have been doing State of the Grizz and giving uh, updates and using that space to bring people updates on what was going on at Gutman, around Gutman, uh, especially as we were, you know, a couple of weeks into the quarantine and, and people just needed up-to-date information. Um, at this point, it, it was time for a pivot. So I decided to wear my, my Gutman cardigan um, to celebrate the, the new show and look a little more um, Chuck Scarborough than, um, than before, but more importantly, just really wanting to, to kick this off um, and to celebrate this, this pivot and what I think is gonna be a fantastic direction. So thank you, Nestor, and, and thank you to Latoya and Joanna and all the folks um, on our teams who, who have made this possible and continue to really be, I'm not gonna say behind the scenes because nothing you do is, is behind anything um, because you prop everything up um, and you lift us all up. So thank you very much for your hard work and dedication. It is truly, truly appreciated. So. Uh, how do I say it? on the news? Back to you, Ness. <laughs> <laughs> well, th thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, VP Pryor. And I, I guess that makes me Sade Betterinwa, uh, which is cool. She, she's a great uh, news personality. So we'll go with it. The purpose of the Grizz News Show is to uh, switch gears a little bit. We, we did spend the greater part of a year focused on the on the pandemic and the, the quarantine and virtual remote learning. And what we want to do right now is highlight some of the really good stuff happening at Gutman for our community, call attention to some special programs, call attention to some special people uh, who really are doing their best to, to, to get stuff started. So uh, in the spirit of that, we'll go to our first uh, news highlight, which I will share with you in three, two, one, as, as my technology is, is slow and catching up with me. So let's, let's do it this way. Uh, here we go. And up first, you're going to notice the SGA elections 2021 screen. Uh, VP Pryor, we just went through a major election cycle in the United States, which resulted in a change of presidency to President Joe Biden, or Uncle Joe, as some folks are calling him. Uh, and now we're going to see a transition in our student leadership. Uh, what, are you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I mean, absolutely. I think I appreciate the, the parallel that you are drawing, and I think we've all felt as we've worked in higher education for um, a handful of years, because you know I'm only 25, um, you know, the, the, around the, the word leadership, many of you know, I, I do a leadership and lunch series, um, but leadership takes so many forms, but one of the, the greatest representations of leadership um, and community engagement is election processes. Um, so, Students, you have an opportunity just like you did in November if you're of voting age and, and, and do have the, the opportunity to, to vote. Uh, you have an opportunity to, to look at uh, who your advocates are going to be and those that work for you. You know, I think one of the things that really came through in this previous national election cycle was that these folks are representatives, they're supposed to be your advocates, they're supposed to work on your behalf and do things that are in your favor. Um, and this is no different than uh, your SGA elections because they have the Student Government Association and um, the association is about you, for you, uh, and they are your advocates and they are your allies. And you know we have fantastic leadership this year. We really hope that uh, we'll continue to have fantastic leaders as students step up to represent the Gutman community um, and really participate. I know uh, Nestor is working with a number of faculty and staff on ways in which our SGA and other student leaders can be more involved in the governance of this institution. Uh, you know, one of the things, you know, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm only in my, my 20s, but all jokes aside, I, we, you know, one of the things we recognize as part of uh, 
institution of higher education, we cannot make decisions and say that they are in the best interest of students, for students, and are really gonna promote student health, wealth, and, and success if we don't engage students and have conversations with students and bring them into, into spaces where we can sit at a table and hear from you um, as colleagues uh, and, and other members of, of the community and your SGA representatives lead that charge, participate actively in that. And if you are so inclined and really wanna be a voice for your student body, uh, your classmates, colleagues, then we, we invite you to participate. You know, we, we want anyone and everyone who is willing to, uh, I'm gonna say step up and step into leadership to come on in and join us um, and, and, and run for an SGA spot. So Ness, I, you know, going back to it, I love the parallel that you drew with, with SGA and our national election because I think it's an important one. Um, and I think it's one that has tremendous value for our students and their understanding of what a student government association really is about. Yeah, and thank you for that, because what we're doing is, is we're calling attention to it for the purposes of getting students excited about their opportunity to lead and help transition the campus in what is a transitional year for many campuses. So we are currently asking for candidates to fill out the form. It's available on the website, and that's going to give them the ability to submit that. Um, we check their qualifications, and then my office, Student Leadership and Campus Life, will go ahead and help them run their campaigns uh, and get them elected. Uh, speaking about elected, the national election uh, was resulted in this general feeling of the nation feeling better about a number of things, the most important thing being the future, uh, the wellness of our nation, so to speak. Uh, but here at government, we're concerned about the wellness of our students, are we not? No, a hundred percent. You know, and I'll and I'll agree with you. You know, I think that uh, the last few years um, there has been a tremendous uptick, um, and I'm going to say some nasty behavior. Um, and I think that folks have a more positive feeling uh, that people will take time to get educated um, and learn to include and be more receptive uh, with other cultures. Um, and I think that's a huge piece of wellness, um, which is something that our wellness office preaches and, and works with our students on. But they also, one of the things before you can invite other people in and, and understand, you, you really have to take some time and be reflective and to think about how you show up in different spaces. Um, so I, I know you're, you're going to cut to that screen, so I'm going to uh, try to keep my comments shorter here, but they really do help you to understand how you show up and how you can show up to be supportive of yourself, um, others in your community and in your family, in a, in a, I'm going to use the word in a healthier way. Yeah, and, and you know, we are concerned about the, the total health of, of our student uh, and the total health of our faculty and of course of our staff and administration. And so specifically for our students, we have the wellness page, which is live, uh, and it gives them access to a number of programs that will uh, focus on, on their mind, on their body, on their spirit, on their soul, uh, yoga and meditation, high intensity and impact training, uh, wellness walking hours, just conversational stuff. And then obviously the CUNY wide uh, uh, programs that, that exist for, for, for all of our uh, CUNY brethren uh, across the 25 campuses, 25 or so campuses that exist in our system. Um, and everything accessible via our webpage. So if there's anything we want you to come away from today's show, knowing is that all of the information that we're giving to you is coming through on the Gutman .cuny.edu webpage. And from there, it's just a click or two to get you to where you want to be. So health and wellness, obviously big and a, a key component of what we're doing. And, and, and a big shout out to our staff over there, uh, Courtney and her team, definitely holding us down uh, during this uh, remote environment that we find ourselves in. Yeah, you know, we, and we just had Miss um, Nicole Brown, who's a, a, a tremendous member of that team um, on our show uh, 
the, the lunch and leadership program a couple of days ago. Uh, and she shared a number of helpful tips uh, as we all continue to work our way through this uh, pandemic um, and, and, you know, I'll say relaxed quarantine because a number of areas and, and places and stations are still uh, on lockdown and, and some things are opening up. Um, but I think it's important that folks understand and recognize and begin to think about emotional health the same way uh, you do with physical health. You know, if you walk down the street and you sprain your ankle, um, you know, you're going to you're going to very likely go to uh, a city MD or, or maybe at least, you know, go home and, and wrap it. Um, we, we have to begin to think about our emotional health um, and our mental health in the same way. Um, emotional pain can very well feel like physical pain uh, when it goes untreated. And we have to begin to think about that, but also emotional health and doing positive things. Um, we have to think about those things and, 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 and leverage our wellness folks to, to help lead us in that direction. Um, and, and so, you know, they, they have positive programs that are gonna help boost you and they have programs that are gonna help bring you up. But like you said, we have a tremendous team over there and, and I hope that everyone will plug into their programs. And I'm gonna take a little bit of a point of privilege and, and move from Chuck Scarborough to Roland Martin, who's on TV One, because um, he wears an ascot. So next week, I'm going to wear an ascot, um, you know, um, as part of my outfit. But but all jokes aside, folks, uh, check in with the wellness office, check out some of their programs. And like I said, it's not just about mental and emotional health. They have yoga, they have fitness classes. It's about complete health. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I do so many yoga classes. I'm not, I wasn't really a huge fan of yoga but um, I'm starting to become one now. So check it out uh, when you can. Yeah. One of the things that, that we talked about with Miss, Miss, with Miss Nicole Brown, I'm so excited to be doing the show in, in this way. I got to apologize for my, for my rapid speaking. Uh, she talked about taking time for yourself and centering yourself. As you know, spring break is literally around the corner for the students at least uh, spring recess, uh, as it's called officially in our documents. Uh, and students are gonna be going uh, potentially out into the world. And so we want them to, to continue to practice the safe social distancing, uh, wear the masks, uh, do not go to these uh, you know, super spreader type events that are happening um, where they put themselves and others at risk. But when they come back to the to 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 uh, the academic world, we're gonna find ourselves with the clock ticking, 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 ticking towards commencement. And so the very next program that we want to throw a, a spotlight to is our Salute to Graduates program, which in in the the past year uh, was our response to losing a physical ceremony. Uh, to commemorate the, the, the transition from the uh, second year to the senior college or from the second year and the associate's degree into life. And so now we're going to be presenting our, our second uh, event uh, of Salute to Graduates on June 18th at 10 a.m. in the morning for the community. Uh, we've got the website up for folks and everything, like I said, that we're talking about is on our website. So uh, VP Pryor, Thoughts on Salute to Graduates? You know, I, I think for us, the Salute to Graduates, like many other institutions, um, is the safest way to celebrate and salute our graduates. Uh, the most important thing is giving our students their just due. Um, they have earned this recognition. They have earned this opportunity. And we want to make sure that we take this time not only to celebrate them, but to share these moments with their family and loved ones and those that have supported them in getting to this space. You know, one of the things that we're working on this year is making sure that our graduates get the typical collateral that comes with celebrating a graduation. Um, you know, and those are tassels and mortarboards and all those other things. Um, so students, as you receive emails from the different offices around the Salute to Graduates and the celebration, please make sure that you are responsive to those pieces. Um, because like I said, we want to make sure that we have everything that we need to recognize you so that your family and friends can see your your smile 
um, and then also that we can get you the collateral and the celebratory components um, of those days. You know, I won't tell you how many, many years ago um, I graduated from undergraduate, uh, but I can tell you that I, I still have the tassel from that day. Um, you know, it, it's sometimes those pieces of what some might call tchotchke, minutia, or whatever it is, items mean the most to you. And like I said, I still have my tassel from just a few decades ago. I'll say it that way. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that um, we we are doing our very best to ensure that the 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 sanctity of what that moment is, is honored and celebrated. Uh, but, but you know, when I say the sanctity, what I really mean is that the student is given an opportunity to be celebrated um, because it is the, the best moment, I think, of, of my year working is, for me, that's the prize, uh, is to be able to celebrate the students as they, they reach a, a milestone in their life. And so we're excited that that's, that that's coming uh, for them. Um, you know, we're talking about students, we're talking about uh, celebrating the students, the students are doing a lot of stuff on campus uh, VP and, and specifically there's one organization right now that's working to amplify the student voice and that's the PTK Phi Theta Kappa organization and they've just unleashed a program. Uh, I'm going to play this this snippet for for the folks at home. Uh, what I do need from you VP is just a head nod if you're able to hear it because I want to make sure that that we got this going the right way. Perfect. Okay. Just raise the volume a little bit. Hi, everybody. This is the treasurer Ramon Felix from Beta Phi Gamma. Beta Phi Gamma is a student organization at Guilherme Community College which focuses on developing student leadership and teamwork. They do this by doing different events where students get the chance to develop disabilities. Today, I want to talk to you guys about one of these events specifically, which is called the College Project. The, in the college project, the student organization and the college come together to promote social justice, education, and student engagement. This year, we want to focus on giving a voice to those students who are not heard and thus created the Amplifying Student Voices project. Amplifying Student Voices focuses on giving students a place where they can share their stories, promote equality and promote diversity. It also gives a place where a student can share with their peers and create a place with a sense of community. On this website, you will find the instructions of how to share your story with us. Please be creative. You can do poems, videos, drawings, and recipes where you can find a way to share your story. It will be great. I also encourage you to return to the page and view the different stories your different peers and students have created. Be sure to comment and subscribe. I am honored to be part of the Goodman community and thank you for watching. Remember to amplify your voice. How awesome was that? You know, it, it's one of the most phenomenal things about working in higher education is watching students get excited for the projects that they're engaged and involved in. And this was no different. I love the energy. I love the message. Um, but more importantly, I love what PTK or Phi Theta Kappa, as you said, is bringing to the table. Um, they really have stepped up uh, in a number of ways this year and got the students more involved. Um, and they're just doing phenomenal things. So. It's, uh, it's, like I said, it's great to watch. Um, it, you know, watching things like this is probably third or fourth on my list of favorite things uh, to do uh, as, a, as a college administrator, orientation and graduation being one and two, and depending on which one I'm at, to pick determines which one is one versus which one is two. Um, but, uh, but watching students engage, participate, and then just have such excitement and energy about these phenomenal projects really is intoxicating. I've picked up on a theme here, uh, VP, and I just, you're revealing all your secrets. And so when, <laughs> when, when we're back in a, in a public space, people are going to be able to call you on some of these things. I, you know, be careful because already you, you got to wear an ascot. And now, depending on which event we're, we're at, people are going to say, well, so which one is this, one or two? Uh, but our students are doing dynamic, amazing things. That web page, uh, Amplifying Student Voices, is continuously updated, uh, featuring 
pieces that have been submitted by our students and it's a year long project so you can continue uh, to contribute to this and, and that's the exciting part of this is that uh, uh, we're continuing to blossom and grow uh, student work and showcase it in a way that gives them that voice and an outlet uh, for themselves. Um, speaking of outlets, sometimes we're running into some difficulties. Uh, we may run into some financial difficulty. We may run into some yes. academic difficulty. Uh, we may run into some um, food insecurity. Uh, the college is prepared and ready to help students through that. And so I call attention to our webpage, Essential Information for Personal Well-Being. Uh, your thoughts on the college's response to some of the concerns that students facing currently? You know, I, I, I'll, I'll go in this direction with it. Um, we have a number of supports uh, and we need to hear more from students, you know, um, to see what types of support everyone needs. Um, our Connect Center has grown. It used to be known as our single stop office. Um, it's now known as the Government Connect Center because they're their role is to connect you with resources, services, and opportunities uh, to improve and better things that might be negatively impacting your success at the college. And those things go from food and housing insecurity uh, to support with tuition uh, and bills, uh, transportation, if that is a need that you might have right now, and a litany of other things that uh, we're here to support, we're here to provide a resource and connection to, but more importantly, help you to negotiate those things that might not uh, be having a positive impact on your success and your focus, I'll say, um, on your academic success, because that's you know one of our ultimate goals is to help you to be academically successful at Gutman and beyond. You know, it's not just about what you do in this building, it's about what you do and what you have access to uh, upon graduation. Yeah, and, and again, it's, it's part of that commitment that you hear many of us talk about, which is we want to see the students succeed. And, and while many people may think that the, the, the conceit is that it's only academically, the fact of the matter is we want to see the students succeed in all phases of their life. So, yes, Absolutely. we want those grades to be on point and we want you to, to go in and do your best work in the classroom. But we also want you to show up as a complete and whole person in all the other phases of your life. And uh, uh, difficulty or adversity in any one of those other areas can certainly impact the other spaces that you show up in. Uh, and so we are committed fully to helping the entire student, not just the academic side of the student. Uh, Absolutely, we want you to, to go and grow um, in as many ways as you possibly can. Um, and as Nesta said, our job is to help you negotiate the spaces where um, some of those things might be a struggle, but also to help you to improve on those things in which you're doing well. Um, so it's, it's you know the full gamut of, of support that we wanna to help to connect you with um, through these, through the Gutman Connect Center and other spaces at the college. Awesome. And so as, as we come to the, to the half hour mark, and I believe what is the end of our show, uh, the last thing that I want to, I want to impress upon uh, our, our viewing audience, both live and, and, you know, on the web, when this touches down on our Gutman YouTube channel, is that all of our events are listed on the Gutman webpage. All you have to do simply is click events off the main page and one click brings you to a calendar view of events. This is March. Uh, and as you can see, we're, we're down here on the 24th. There were five events today. Uh, there's going to be eight events tomorrow. There's four events on Friday. Yeah, look at that. And there's even events over the weekend. So if you ever find yourself in a position of like, I'm bored or I'm not quite sure what there is to do, or is something happening today? We want everybody to please go to the Gutman events webpage. We've created it in such a way that almost every single thing happening at the college is gonna be highlighted there. We want it to be your go-to destination for everything Gutman. Is that right? 
works for me. You know, I think one of the most powerful things that we've done um, since we've moved into pandemic response um, and now pandemic planning um, and execution is uh, bring things to students virtually. You know, one of the things that we've been discussing over the last few weeks is, uh, well, two things I'll, I'll say, is engaging students differently, though we're gonna continue to use this medium, but also leveraging program spaces to connect with and get students some swag. Um, you know, because one of the most important things uh, for me is, is, you know, having things like this. So when I go out in public, people know that I am a member of the Gutman Community College community. Um, and we wanna make sure that as things open up and people begin to move around more safely, but still protecting themselves, um, that you'll be able to see and notice your friends um, from Gutman uh, in other spaces, but more importantly, that you will continue to be a representative of the institution um, because you're gonna have some swag. Uh, but like I said, we wanna, we wanna continue to engage you and hear from you, but I think we've done a very good job of transforming how we communicate with students and making it more efficient and effective in the virtual space. Um, and we're gonna continue to do that and look at ways to uh, and continue to improve. Um, but going back to, and I'm gonna plug SGA elections again, this is another medium and another way that uh, student government leadership helps us to understand how students wanna receive information. You know, um, I, I, I'm I brand new to Instagram. I just got a, my Instagram account less than a year ago. Um, so I don't know if you wanna receive posts that way or if Facebook is still a thing. You know, I know TikTok was huge last year. Um, help us to figure out what your student, what your, your constituents, you know, how they wanna receive information. Um, but but the, the big thing is communication, engagement, and having the knowledge of what's going on on your campus. Because remember, we do all these things for you. Um, all of these programs, all of these activities, uh, all of these shows uh, are for student information and so that we can help you uh, to stay engaged at Gutman, uh, be better informed citizens and continue to be the awesome, uh, amazing students that you are. Yeah, yeah. And so final thoughts as we wrap up our first episode of the Grizz News Show, because we want to we want to be concise and, and to the point for, for the for the people is that we're going to have a, a, a new feature that we're going to roll out in two weeks. And I think right now it's called Word of the Day and okay. it's going to be brought to us by a member of our community. So we're going to be looking for students uh, who have a particular story that they want to tell and share with us and use that as the uh, the, the way to draw in some more interest into what our students are doing. And then by extension, we may also uh, have space to highlight other members of our community, faculty that are doing really good work, staff that are doing some amazing things. Uh, but this is how the show is going to organically evolve and transform, to, to use your term, uh, VP, uh, to make sure that we are attending to what the people are thinking what the people are saying, what the people are feeling, uh, because we are dedicated and focused on delivering that message. Absolutely. You know, this isn't our show. This is a show um, for the students and for the community. Um, we want to maintain that. Um, and, and I'm going to say get back to that. You know, when we first started State of the Grizz, uh, on average, we had 25 to 30 folks um, when we had some more contentious conversations, we had a, as many as 160 folks uh, view this program live. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's important for folks to watch it live or to be aware of it and be engaged in it, um, but I do know that we intend for this to be uh, what people believe they need and hopefully what people want. Uh, so as Nestor said, we're gonna be recruiting and working with students, recruiting and working with faculty and staff uh, to bring more people into this space to have more conversation and communication about pressing issues at Gutman. Um, so as you said, as we evolve from the state of the Grizz, as far as what has been going on, um, we want this to be what is going on and, and where Gutman is going and looking for the future. So uh, I'm excited for, the, for this opportunity and um, I'm gonna take a moment of personal privilege and 
and just thank everyone that has helped us to get here. All of our essential workers, our healthcare workers, um, on our campus, our public safety folks, and, and our folks in facilities that have helped keep those uh, facilities clean. Um, and hopefully soon we'll be better enabled to enter our building and do it in a safe manner. Um, as always, Grizzlies, I want you to know that we got your back and that we're here to help and to serve you and that um, this show and all that we do is for you. So Nestor, it's been a pleasure uh, to, to kick off the Grizz News Show. I'm excited to see what we come up with, but more importantly, I'm excited to see who, who, who joins us in this space um, and, and to see where we can take, this, the, take the news. Yeah, yeah, and so on behalf of uh, the entire Gutman family, I know I speak for everybody when, we, when I say we miss y'all uh, and each other. Uh, on behalf of the Office of uh, Student Leadership and Campus Life and the Division of Student Engagement and our special friend Branch, who my daughter Brooklyn said was going to be on the show, uh, we thank you for taking time to be with us uh, and we will see you in two weeks. Thank you, my people. Take care, everyone.